Hey gorgeous, welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 154. This is your host, Holly Wharton. I'm here with today's special guest, Arabelle Yi. Arabelle is the women's leadership coach who has spoken on different stages in Australia and worked with thousands of women from across the globe in areas of human behavior, mindset, and helping them start up businesses from scratch. She's been featured in major publications as well as media as an influential coach and speaker serving as a catalyst for women to step up and step into their personal leadership. Welcome, Arabelle. Hi. Hello, Holly. Hi. I'm really excited to talk to you today about mindset and business and other stuff. So thank you very much for coming on the show. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for having me. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about your background and your business journey and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So, um, so my background is I started this business. Okay. Let me go back a few steps back. (laughs) So, you know, just, I, I was originally from Burma, Mm -hmm. um, which, uh, the country that not many people know, although it's really big. So we were closed out from the rest of the world for decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I came out of Burma about a little over 10 years ago. And then I was working in the corporate world. I had uh, two businesses while I was working in the nine to five just to test it out if it's going to work. But those businesses didn't really align to my purpose. Mm. And to be honest, I didn't really know what my purpose was back in those days. So um, one day I woke up in the, um, I was actually lying on the hospital bed because I ended up in the emergency for like the fourth time in four, uh, 10 years. Mm. And so I was, I had like four major accidents in within like a 10 years time span. And then in, in the last one, I was lying on the hospital bed and then I had a lot of time to think. And then I was thinking to myself, you know, what am I doing with my life? Um, you know, am I living my life meaningfully? What's my purpose? And I was starting to ask all those questions. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was being a hypocrite. You know, I said that, you know, these are my values. My values are about helping people, empowering people, you know, loving the planet earth and all that kind of stuff. But then there I was, I was working for a mining company, which to me was destroying the earth. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was like, I'm a hypocrite. So if I really wanted to, and I didn't feel like I was living my life meaningfully. So then I asked myself, what would be the first step for me if I want to make a change in my life? And so I thought, okay, I need to quit my job. Although I had the security of, um, you know, the lifestyle that I wanted, the regular income and, you know, the, the role that I was having and everything seemed to be perfect on the surface. So to cut the story short, I left my job and I was also, I trained myself. I took a training to become a clinical psychotherapist. So that's how I started my business because I thought, the, the best way for me to feel like I'm doing something meaningful is to help other people. Mm. And I've, I've always had this gift of helping other people, you know, overcome uh, a lot of mindset barriers that they have in their lives. So that's how I became a clinical psychotherapist. And I started working with people. And then I noticed that majority of my clients were women. And mm. as I work with more and more women, I, I realized that Uh, women tend to be a little bit more open to these kind of help. And um, my business really boomed within like a few months of starting out. So then people started coming to me, asking me questions like, so what did you do right? You know, what did you do in your business that it's like picking up really fast? And I was making quite, you know, a lot of income. So then I started helping people with their businesses. And then that's when I saw a gap in the market. Mm-hmm. where my background is in mindset and transformation and, you know, psychology, which is something that I have had personal interest in since I was like 12. And then people were coming to me for business coaching. So I thought, okay, cool. This is a gap in the market. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So then I started doing mindset and business coaching. And slowly it, it became like a transformational business coach. 
And then from then on, I start to realize that for people, um, mainly women, because they are majority of my clients are women, Mm -hmm. for women to really succeed in their life and business, to really find their purpose or to really make an impact in the world. um, The first thing that women need to do is to tap into their personal leadership, you know, Mm -hmm. the leadership skills that they already have, but they might not know that they have it. So that's how I became a women's leadership coach. And ever since then, I've been running events and workshops and um, coaching women from all over the world. Mm, Exciting. So there's something you say on your website that I absolutely love, and it's that business is 80% mindset and 20% mechanics. I love that. So tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that. Sure. So that is actually something that I um, took from Tony Robbins. And I heard it in one of his videos where he said business is 80% mindset and 20% mechanics, which is really true. Mm. Because what I found myself and also from my clients is that you can have the best coach in the world, you can have the best strategy in the world, you can have the best of the best of everything in the world. But if you're not mentally prepared for success or mentally prepare for all the challenges that you're going to have to go through to get to where you want to be, then even if you have the best of the best, you know, mm-hmm. strategies or coach in the world, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what kinds of mindset challenges did you experience when you were building your business? For me, well, one of the things, the main things was that I wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know enough. So that was the biggest thing, self-doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think that's a big thing for a lot of women. I think so too. I see that. I hear that almost on a daily basis. Mm, yeah. And so what kinds of things did you do to overcome the self-doubt and all these mindset challenges? Yeah. For me, I realize that I'm kind of a bit of extreme. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, there were, yes, there were so many times when I doubted myself. You know, there were so many times when I woke up in the middle of the night um, with a panic attack thinking I was going to fail mm. um, because I was putting everything, all my time, money, and, you know, everything in my business. And so that if it didn't exceed, it was as if my life's gonna end there Mm -hmm. and then at the same time of course you know I also when I started my business I knew what kind of a lifestyle that I wanted to live I wanted to be able to travel I don't want to be stuck in an office in one location so I started as an online business so then that means I need to post a lot of stuff online Mm -hmm. that means every time I click that publish or you know submit button the whole world there's a potential that the whole world's going to see it And so the first thing that came into my mind is that, who am I to be saying these things? Do Mm. I even know enough? You know, there are so many people out there who are saying the same thing or who know more than me. Why would people even listen to me? So those were the the questions that I had to deal with almost on a daily basis when I started out. However, one thing that worked for me is I actually looked at it from the other perspective. You know, obviously there were there was a lot of fear coming out from doing this work. And I noticed that when there's fear, that actually means that I'm doing something that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. If I'm comfortable with it, then I won't be scared. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing something that I've never done before. That means I'm pushing my boundaries. I'm pushing the limit. That means there's a potential for growth. Mm -hmm. So therefore, every time something scares me, I have to do it, whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I did. And it's just a habit and a practice. And that's how I overcame the self doubt. But not to say that I don't have any self doubt anymore today, Mm -hmm. I still doubt myself from time to time. But that's usually how I do it. Mm. So did you find that once you acknowledge that fear equaled a potential for growth and you start taking action anyway and doing those things that scared you. Did you find that the more you took action on the scary things, the easier it got? Definitely. Because I always tell my clients that, you know, uh, confidence comes from taking action. Yeah. So if you, even if you're scared, just do it anyway. And you, that doesn't mean that you might not fail. You might still fail, but you know, fail again and fail better. Yeah. So yeah. So that's, that's what I found myself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I love that. And I love that the whole NLP concept that there's no failure, only feedback. Because if you do something and it doesn't work, then just do it differently or try it again, 
somehow in a different way. And, you know, if it doesn't work, then try something different. But I love that, that concept of just trying again and seeing what works because there's no exactly. one solution for everyone. Yeah, definitely. You know, I always say that, you know, two plus two is four, mm. right? And five minus one is four and six minus two is still four. <laughs> yeah. Many ways yeah. to get to four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so was there a tipping point in your business where things went from that kind of growth period to flow? Oh, yeah. So um, so when I started, it really took off really fast. However, um, I at one point, I noticed that it wasn't really flowing in terms of um, I'm a big believer in, you know, um, and energy and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, and I was thinking there was still something that was blocking. And I noticed that that was actually me mm-hmm. because I, you know, certain things that I was saying, certain things that I was doing also because I was starting out and mainly because I still had that self doubt of not being good enough. I was studying a lot of people online and mm-hmm. subconsciously, I, without knowing it, I was sort of mimicking the words that they yeah. use or, you know, copying some of their style. And I didn't really have the authentic me. Mm. And so that that's also one of the biggest reasons why I felt like I was a fraud because mm-hmm. I wasn't being authentic or vulnerable or you know, just me. So that was when I noticed that, okay, you know what, even if, again, even if it scares me, just say what I think, even if it sounds weird, or even if I think it's sounds stupid, just say it and just Mm -hmm. be yourself. And so the moment I allow myself to be me, that was a tipping point, everything flows, people start coming to me from nowhere. And I started getting speaking engagements. And I, I just don't even know how it all happened. Mm. I I love that because I think everyone, so many people say, you know, just be your authentic self. And that's kind of a buzzword that people are using now, but it can be really hard because we're so overwhelmed by so much stuff. You know, we subscribe to other entrepreneurs' newsletters and we read their blogs and we watch their videos. And there's so much stuff that we can absorb from other people that it can be hard to just kind of stop that and say, wait, no, I've got to be me. This is me. So did you find yourself kind of going within to find yourself so that you could express your authentic self or how did you, how did you allow yourself to do that yes so that's a great question holly i you know i think just like a lot of people and just like a lot of um those who are starting out when i was starting out you know i was uh, like I said, I was watching a lot of people online. I was subscribing to a lot of people. I was in every possible face group on Facebook group on earth. And so, and because of that, I couldn't really, um, and I was relying on a lot of external things to find my own voice. And then I realized that, you know, there has to be a point where I need to stop all of this. When I realize, when I, you know, when I'm happy with myself that I have learned quite a lot from you know, a lot of people out there who are doing well. So at one point I unsubscribed everyone. Mm. I, I probably only have like one or two people in my mailbox right now. And, um, I stopped going, I actually left a lot of Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. I don't, watch a lot of things online anymore. And what I realized is that I need to do a lot of work on myself because it comes back to mindset. And especially for people like us, we are the face of our business. We are the brand of our business and our business is the reflection and the extension of who we are as a person. Mm -hmm. So if we want our business to flow, if we want the right clients to come to us, if we want to make money and if we want to live the lifestyle that we want, then we need to do, I needed to do the inner work. So because I've always been a very, um, I used, I started out as doing, you know, personal development and um, self-development, all that kind of work. And then from then on, I've always kind of been a spiritual person. So mm-hmm. I started doing a lot of deep inner work. And then from then on, I start to realize I had a lot of insecurities. I had a lot of blocks. I, you know, I was looking at people online and I was secretly jealous, being Mm -hmm. jealous of them. Mm. So those are like the mini problems that I had. But then I had to work 
on that level first. And then from then on, I tapped into myself and, you know, my inner wisdom more and more dive deeper into myself. You know, I used, I meditate two hours every day. I do a lot of other spiritual practices. And I believe that when you do the inner work, that really, really helps your business flow and yeah. grow. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. That's fantastic. Yeah. So one of the things that I love about how you work with people is that you create unique packages for each client rather than having a cookie cutter solution like so many business owners do. Yeah. Um, so how do you go about creating these unique packages? Mm, so good question. So again, um, I'm just going to keep on comparing when I started and where I am right now so mm -hmm. that, you know, whoever's listening to this podcast, if, if they are in the same um, phase, then they can sort of relate to that as well. So again, when I was starting out, because I was a bit unsure of myself and unsure of who I'm going to be working with and, you know, what's going to unfold, I, the safest way for me to start was to have a cookie cutter approach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would, I used to have like a three months program and a six months program. And I would have, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, topics that mm -hmm. I would work with them. So for three months, we would work on like six areas for their mm -hmm. business. And for six months, it would be like 12 areas. For example, it worked to a certain extent. However, I realized that everyone is in different stages of their life and business. Sometimes they might be they might already be in a certain level of their business, but in their personal life, they are really struggling and mm -hmm. it's going to impact their business, even if they're already in a certain stage. So that's when I realized that, okay, I'm going to scrap all of that. I'm going to trust my own instinct and I'm going to trust in my own ability to be able to help these women. So I, the key here, I think, or at least for me is to really talk to them. You know, we all have like these discovery sessions mm -hmm. or the first free complimentary sessions. And in those sessions, I used to focus a lot on sales. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how can I close this you know, uh, closes sales or how can I sell? But from then I really shifted into listening to them and asking questions. And when I do that, I, um, and I listen to every single word that they use to express their, um, problems that they're facing in their life. And from then on, I come up with packages like, you know, okay, so if you're in this stage, your business seems to be flowing, but then your in your personal life, you're struggling with this. So then we can't actually deal with your business right now. We have to deal with the things that you have in your personal life. Do you want that? And mm. if they say yes, then that's what we work on first. And then we focus on business. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That makes absolute sense. So does this mean then that you have different, I mean, how do you determine then how long the package will be? Is it depending on each specific topic that you're working on or how, how do you put that together? Yeah. So what they are going to need um, when they work with me is, um, I think it would probably be the simplest one because you can hear it from, you know, where are you in your business? What have you done? What's working? What's not working? Mm -hmm. And then from then on, you know, um, uh, what they need to do or what's the gap. Um, that, that we need to fill in order to get to where they want to be. So in terms of business, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, however, um, how many sessions or how long it's going to take, I would say that um, it's, I've never actually broken it down for anyone like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, if I have to think about it now, I think it comes from, I think, experience. Yeah. And also I believe in my in, like gut instinct. Yeah. So I use those two a lot. And, um, and then of course it also depends on how much they're willing to spend, mm. how much they're willing to invest. While I understand that, you know, how much money they're willing to invest is just a matter of priority. Mm -hmm. Um, for some people, um, they are really struggling financially, mm -hmm. and but they really want to make this happen. So then that's when I have to adjust the cost, you know, how many sessions that they're going to need. Um, do they need support between, you know, the calls that we have, um, you know, like uh, email support, what kind of support do you need? So 
it all comes down to really listening to that person and coming up with something that works for them and works mm-hmm. for me so that we're both valuing our time and money. Mm, excellent. Now, do you then go away and put together a proposal for them or do you just kind of put it together on the spot and say, this is what I suggest? What do you think? I do it on the spot. Mm, okay. Yeah. Right. I... Um, I okay. So for when 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 I was starting out, uh, I actually have things written down on the paper mm. so that I can kind of look at the paper and play around with numbers and sessions and everything. But as you do this more and more, uh, you kind of know uh, what's what works best for both of us. So then now I just do it on the spot on the call. Excellent. And how has your business changed since you switched from doing the standard packages to doing the more unique packages? I think dramatically because um, because th- that's something that I'm more comfortable with because I have more confidence in myself in terms of being able to help my clients. Mm-hmm. And so because I'm more confident in what I'm delivering, it automatically trans, uh, transmute into, you know, their confidence yeah. as well. Be- you know, whatever that I'm feeling, um, my clients are subconsciously going to feel it. Hmm, definitely. Definitely. And if they feel like you're confident that they can help them, then that makes them more confident in signing up to work with you. Exactly. Hmm. Now, one thing that you mentioned a lot is paying attention to your gut instinct. Is this something that you were always able to do or did you develop that as your business grew? I, well, I've always had that, but I never really paid attention to that that much before but um as i worked on myself and as i do the deep inner work the mindset work a lot more i start to be able to tap into uh, like i said you know the inner wisdom or the gut instinct or uh the intuition whatever you call it um and I think it's just a habit and a practice where as you do it more and more, as mm. you stop listening to the noise outside and start listening to the voice inside, that's when you get really good at it. Yeah. And how did you first stop listening to the noise and start paying attention to that inner voice? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did I start listening to the noise outside? I think... I, I can't really exactly remember the timing, but I think it was probably around the same time when I stopped subscribing to everyone. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I start leaving all the Facebook groups. And at that point, I really felt alone mm-hmm. because I didn't really have anyone to, you know, stalk <laughs> online, <laughs> you know, because I was just on my own trying to figure things out. Uh, but of course, I had my own mentor and yeah. I had a few different coaches and mentors. So they're pretty much the only ones that I work with. And I think um, it was a struggle for me. But as I was alone and as I forced myself to figure this out on my own and from time to time with my mentor, I had no choice but to listen to mm. my own voice. And there was no noise because I've already shut myself off from that. Mm, Yeah, definitely. I love that. And I think that a lot of women go through this process every once in a while as well. It's like they suddenly feel like there's just so much noise, there's so much going on, and they just have to kind of detach themselves from social media and all the online stuff and go within. Yes, exactly. Mm. Excellent. So, Arabelle, how can other women entrepreneurs work with you? What's the best way to approach you i th- they can go to my website mm-hmm. arabelle g a r a b e l l e y e dot com mm-hmm. or they can also go to my facebook uh, which is also arabelle ye and um, yeah i'm pretty active on my uh, facebook page and also they can contact me through the contact form on my website okay so then the best way is to sign up for a discovery call and then see where to take it from there yeah definitely excellent so and do you have any other online offerings um, right now, I would just say that if they are interested in finding out, you know, how they can possibly build their businesses from scratch or, you know, get to uh, where they want to be in their life and business, I think the best way is to just get in touch with me directly mm-hmm. because I'm actually quite booked with speaking engagements a lot. So mm-hmm. I take on only a few clients a year now. Mm-hmm. Um, however, if people want to sign up for a discovery call with me, I'm happy to talk to them. Mm, excellent. Okay, great. Now, one thing that you've mentioned a couple of times throughout this interview is that you've worked with a number of different business coaches and mentors. 
Do you have any women business mentors that you would recommend? Are there any women entrepreneurs who inspire you that you'd like to mention today? Women entrepreneurs that inspire me, um, she's not a business coach, but then she is an amazing woman. Her name is Alexi Painos. Mm-hmm. Um, she um, she does a lot of personal development workshops and she, she helps people with, um, yeah, basically personal development and a lot of spiritual stuff as well. And she's just amazing. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I loved uh, chatting with you about business mindset because I think so few people really pay as much attention to business mindset as it deserves. And I think so many people tend to focus on taking action or the mechanics, as you said, rather than dealing with the mindset stuff and going within and doing the inner work. Yes, I think, you know, in business, uh, you know, a lot of things that we talk about, especially if it's an online business about list building and social media, Mm. and I mean, uh, uh, webinars, and all these things are extremely important. Mm. However, I think it's a balance. It's a balance between um, working on the business strategy, but also working on yourself. I think I believe that they go hand in hand together. Yeah, I definitely, definitely. And it can be so easy to get caught up in doing the business strategy stuff because there's so much information out there on that. And the inner stuff, its I feel like it's a bit more challenging sometimes because everyone has their own different path to working on that stuff. Yes. And it's a matter of finding what works for them. You know, I know a lot of people who does just yoga and yoga just works perfect for them and it's good. Mm. And, you know, uh, for some people, they only... they. The only thing that they do is meditation. And if it works for them, that's great. But as long as we're doing something Mm. or if it's just personal development, you know, but then again, it's about taking action. We can read books and watch videos online. But then if we don't really practice and live it, then it's never going to happen. Yeah, definitely. There's got to be that balance because if you're just doing the inner work, and I think it can get really easy to get caught up in the inner work because it feels great and you can, you can feel yourself growing and you're becoming this different person, but you also need to take action because otherwise the business just isn't going to happen. Definitely. Hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us today. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, same here, Holly. And thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 154 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.